Hello, you're watching the Open RAN Summit, part of our year-round DSP leaders coverage. I'm Guy Daniels. Mavenir is one of the leading proponents of Open RAN and its virtualized network architecture, with work dating back to the early days of XRAN. Who better to give us a progress report on the current state of play of Open RAN and the lessons learned so far in what is still a relatively short time frame? Joining me now is John Baker, SVP of Business Development at Mavenir. Hello, John. Really good to see you again. Now, during this year's summit, we have been looking at the advances made to date on Open RAN and its deployment, as well as considering its prospects for the next couple of years. Can we start by identifying the progress of Open RAN, and can you give us an update as to where we are as an industry? Yeah, great to be with you, Guy. And uh, you know, certainly, as you say, you know, it's uh, it's been about six and a half years since uh, we really got into this Open RAN venture. Um, and, uh, you know, with about uh, six companies that really formed the basis of XRAN, that, which then moved into the ORAN Alliance. Um, and as such, we have now over 127 com companies in 21 com countries actually participating in the Open RAN ecosystem. And, you know, the initial criteria for Open RAN was to bring new system vendors um, as an alternative to the two trusted incumbents. Um, and as such, today we have over seven new system end-to-end -end suppliers in the Open RAN ecosystem. So I would argue strongly that to date, you know, Open RAN has been a success, um, you know, within the vendor community and in the operator community. Well, let's talk about that ecosystem, John, because central to Open RAN is the support of a broad and engaged ecosystem that covers technology companies through to apps developers. Is Open RAN succeeding with this goal? Um, where are we today in terms of ecosystem development? Yeah, I think, you know, we've, we've certainly got all of the, um, you know, segments. And I think, you know, I broadly classify the segments as the remote, remote radio units, central units, distributed units, and then um, into the RIC, which is the new area of development going forward. But, you know, within each of those categories, I think you've probably got um, between you know, 10 to 20 companies that are offering product, um, which is ORAN compatible. Um, and, you know, Mavenir alone is, is integrated with 14 plus different radio vendors, um, you know, over the last couple of years. And then, you know, as of the end of last year, you know, we've seen both Ericsson and Nokia really stepping up and, and starting to take the open round journey and, uh, uh, to that extent, you know, pretty much every, you know, every trusted vendor in the marketplace is now um, on the Open RAN train. Well, as we've heard, a huge amount of work has been done to get Open RAN to this point. All eyes are now on commercial deployments, especially around brownfield sites. What's your view on the current adoption of Open RAN? Yeah, I think I think first of all, I would say, you know, as I've always said in, you know, in over the last few years, it's not a revolution, it's an evolution. And um, the adoption of Open RAN is really sort of based on, you know, expiry of existing customer contracts um, and new frequency bands becoming available. And, you know, from a Mavenir perspective alone, you know, we've seen uh, deployments and, and, and contracts being led in with the likes of Deutsche Telekom, you know, with Vodafone. Uh, VMO2, uh, DISH in the US, which is still the largest um, and the, the fastest open RAN deployment that's gone out there with over 20,000 sites today um, supporting, you know, supported by open RAN software. So, um, you, you know, momentum is gathering um, and, you know, we still see, you know, new operators coming into the uh, deployment scenarios on a weekly, monthly basis. So, we, you know, we expect that to continue as, you know, existing incumbent vendors' contracts expire and uh, operators make their decision between, uh, you know, non-standalone 5G and standalone 5G. And there's obviously a lot more to come, John, but we, we, we've seen so much already. What have we learned then so far? As an industry, what are the key learnings from getting open run to this stage? Yeah, I think I think the biggest one is the you know, you know vendors and operators have learned to work together, um, and and that's a huge step forward in the industry in terms of 
you know, speed of innovation in which you can bring new technology, new interfaces, uh, and, and new vendors to the table um, and, and prove that, you know, partners can work together and compete at the same time and, um, and rapidly solve problems that, that may exist in terms of the integration process. And, um, you know, we've also seen that in the standardization world with the ORAN Alliance, um, you know, rapidly bringing new specifications together um, and, and bringing them through the Etsy adoption process. And, and what this is showing overall is that, you, you know, with Open RAN, we've really bro broken the generational uh, labels effectively that have been tasked, such as 2G, 3G, 4G, where every two, three years, you know, you come out with a, another generation of technology. Um, you know, going forward with Open RAN being the basis of a 6G architecture and a 6G platform, um, there is absolutely no reason why, you know, operators are working on the generational cycles anymore. You know, you're going to see um, new technology solutions, new features, new applications coming out as and when um, operators and, and, and technology companies can actually innovate. So, you know, I think I think it's a foundational change to the ecosystem, which is, you know, we're going to see the benefits of going forward for, for, a, for a very long time to come. Well, let me bring you to another point, John, because a lot's been said about the comparative merits of open RAN versus more traditional RAN. Now that we have data from a large number of trials and from early commercial adoption, what's the feedback so far on the performance of open RAN? Yeah, so I think in terms of the major deployments and the tier one operators that, that Mavin has been involved with, you know, we're certainly seeing that Open RAN performs equally well, if not better in certain areas than closed RAN. Um, and so from that perspective, from a performance perspective and a future parity perspective, you, you know, we could argue that we're there, we're, we're about, we're equal, you know, there should be no differentiation in any of this. Um, and, um, you know, from a security perspective, you know, Open RAN is proven and shown to be um, equal, you know, in a security from security perspective. So a lot of the early arguments that came out there from um, a number of the large incumbents about, you know, the weaknesses have all been proven wrong, essentially. Um, and so, you know, it's now providing a, a, a strong platform to move forward on for next generation technologies. Well, finally, John, there have been a lot of positives, as we've heard, but we know we're not there yet. There's still work to be done on Open RAN. What would you say are the main challenges that still need to be addressed by the industry? Yeah, so there, there are two major challenges that need to be addressed. You, you know, certainly from a Mavic perspective, you know, we've been very vocal about a couple of these. One is actually product certification. Um, I think, you know, the, you know, as you see in the ecosystem, there's 18 plus OTICs that have now been defined in the open RAN ecosystem. But in reality, you know, you've got to question whether um, the OTICs can actually carry out standardization from a, an accreditation perspective. You know, can you, can you go and get a product approved in one OTIC and then that approval process is accepted on a global basis. So, so we've got some teething, you know, teething issues there in terms of, you know, accreditation of laboratories and commonality of approval processes across OTIC labs. Um, and, and then the other, the other sort of elephant in the room is the definition around, um, you know, what is an o, what is a DU, what is a CU, um, you know, which is being sort of leveraged by the current incumbents to try and keep some exclusivity in the marketplace. Um, just to explain the background of that is that, you know, the great thing about ORAN Alliance is that they didn't actually specify how you build uh, a DU or a CU. Um, the bad thing about it is they didn't specify how to build a CU and a DU. So, you know, what you're left with is an operator to actually specify all the interfaces that are necessary on a common product or the industry self-regulates to the extent that you know, all of the interfaces defined in the ORAN architecture are actually available in those ORAN products. Um, you know, what we're seeing is, uh, you, you know, certain vendors trying to keep proprietary interfaces in the products as well as adding open RAN interfaces to the extent that those products will, again, give vendor lock um, in the marketplace. And I think, you know, the 
industry is grappling with that issue to define what's the minimum configuration of a DU, what's the minimum configuration of a CU. I think on the, on the front hall side with um, the Cat A, Cat B interfaces, I think you know we're good in terms of those front hall interfaces. But you know, the, from a, from an industry perspective, and you know, the operators avoiding vendor lock, um, they need to be very careful about. Uh, you know, making sure that the O and M interfaces and necessary front hall interfaces support, you know, both forward development and look after the legacy development that's already done. Otherwise, you, you know, we're just going back into another form of vendor lock, which you, you know was caused in the uh, industry about 15 years ago. So, um, you know, and if that happens, we end up negating all the positive work that's been done in Open RAN. But you know, we know the industry is trying to get their arms around it, and hopefully that will get resolved. Fairly soon. Well, let's hope so, John. It's going to be an interesting 12 months ahead. But we must leave it there for now. Good talking with you again, and thanks so much for sharing your views with us today. Yeah, absolute pleasure.